Welcome back to my book reviews. My name is Michelle and I do five star book reviews and I am so excited to talk about this book right here today, The Last Train to London by Meg Waite Clayton. And this is the first book that I've read by her and I cannot tell you how amazing her writing is. It, it <laughs> I'm like stuttering, okay, because I can't find the right words. When you read a historical fiction book that is like literature, this book is like literature. It is, it will go down, okay? First of all, I read on her Facebook page today, it's an international bestseller. And I am so excited for her, okay? Because it's only been out since September 10th. And it's already, it's number one new release Jewish American fiction on Amazon. And I knew it though, I, I did. I knew it going in that this book was gonna be huge. As I was reading the very beginning, I was like, oh my God, we are in for an amazing book. So up on your screen, 464 pages, okay? I'm telling you, you are going to be happy about it though because this is such a rich story. There's so much to say that I can't believe she said it all in 464 pages. World War II, historical fiction, just when you think you know every story about World War II, you don't. There are so, it's incredible what I have learned reading historical fiction about World War II that I did not learn in school. They, I don't think they can devote enough time in school to learn everything, but these stories, these are the stories that should last forever, okay? So up on your screen, I'm going to read it off my phone so we can get started here because there's so much to say, okay? The New York Times best-selling author of Beautiful Exiles conjures her best novel yet, a pre-World War II era story with the emotional re resonance of Orphan Train and All the Light We Cannot See, centering on the kinder transports that carried thousands of children out of Nazi-occupied Europe and one brave woman who helped them escape to safety. Absolutely, I put this book right up there with Orphan Train. That It, it was exactly what I was thinking when I started. Okay, and here we go from Krista Hanna, who should know. Kristen knows historical fiction. She knows good books. An absolutely fascinating, beautifully rendered story of love, loss, and heroism in the dark days leading up to World War II. And I'm going to read the very beginning part. There were so many great parts in the, in the beginning of this book, which I loved how she did, because some of us, <laughs> me, Okay, we don't know everything about, and we're like, wh where are we starting? What are we going to start this book and, and give us a little bit of something so we're not completely lost, right? So here we go, Tanta, and I hope I'm saying that right, Truce, as she is known, is determined to save as many children as she can. After Britain passes a measure to take in young refugees from the German Reich, she dares to approach Adolf Eichmann the man who would later help devise the final solution to the Jewish question. Truce then sets off in a race against time to lead hundreds of children on a perilous journey to freedom. And I have so much to say about that. <laughs> I'm going to get out my notes. That's how much I have to say about this because I went to Wikipedia and I learned even more about this story. I'm trying to decide how to start here. Let's just start at the beginning. She begins the book off in 1936. Now. For those of us Americans, 1936, we don't understand what's going on over there, okay? I know because I've talked to my grandparents extensively. The news was not true for the most part, or Americans just didn't want to hear it, okay? After World War I, we were just like done, okay, with Europe. We're like, please, just get along, okay? But we op she opens up the book in 1936 with Stefan Newman, a Jewish boy, and Zophie Helene, I don't know that name, a Christian girl whose mother happens to edit an anti-Nazi newspaper. She's like editor or a writer. So she's not in a good situation either, okay? These are two young people who are not in a good situation in 1936. And how, okay, you don't read many historical fiction books that read like a thriller suspense novel. And this book, Meg, you did such an amazing job that every 
first of all, she had short chapters, which I love. Historical fiction is not really known for short chapters, but she did it beautifully. Short chapters and that you were like, oh my gosh, what come next? What's next? What's next? And I love that. Okay. I love how she did that. So we open up with, we don't know how these two young people and then Tanti Truce, Truss, Truce, I'm going to say Truce just because I don't know. Okay. How their worlds collide, but we will find out and I'm not going to tell you how, but anyway, so Truce is a childless woman. She risks everything to save these children. She figures out a way. She's like, we got to get these children out of Europe. Things are going bad. I mean, the foresight that she had, that things were not going to be very good in a, in a very, but in a short amount of time, but then in hindsight, like it took longer than I think she even knew it was going to take. So she, I'm not going to give you too much. Okay. And I know my time is running and I usually don't talk about books this long, but I just have to give you guys some, <laughs> something. Okay. And I'm putting, putting pictures up on your screen so you can see what she looks like. And then she runs in, she gets the opportunity, I should say, to run into Adolf Eichmann. If ever there was an evil man outside of Hitler, it is this man, okay? But fortunately, she runs into him a little bit before he becomes the second most evil man in the world. But he's still evil because he agrees to help her with the children to run a train out because he's like, you know what? I want them out too. I don't like these Jewish children. Let's get them out, right? But she has to get 600 children exactly on a Saturday, which is their holy, high holy day, right? So he's thinking, you know what? These Jews are not going to allow their children on transportation on one of their days, on their day of the week, not on a Saturday. They don't go on transportation on a Saturday. Well, he did not understand the Jewish people very well, okay? Because they love their children and they knew that this was going to be it. They knew they had to get their children out. And I give them all the credit in the world because I cannot imagine. And okay, so this is what she did from the beginning, her first trip in 1938, December 11th, until the beginning of World War II, which was September 1st, 1939. She had, she arranged 74 transports and saved over 10,000 children. Just comprehend that for a second. Okay. This woman is a hero. Most of those children never did see their parents again. And I, I would really like my nerd in me would love to delve so much deeper into this story because I love it so much. It, it's an incredible, incredible book. This is Meg's seventh book and everything that I'm reading about it, people are like the best book yet, best book yet. So I hope and pray this becomes a movie because it will be an amazing movie. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what happens. I just wanted to give you a little backstory, okay? And what I looked up on a on uh, little Adolf Eichmann, he did eventually get executed. He got tried and executed. He tried to he tried to hide, but they found him, and I'm so happy they did because he was an evil, evil man, and he did not understand that the Jewish people were willing to risk everything to get their children out. So if you love historical fiction, you cannot miss this book. This has to be on your list. I'm going to put IndieBound. I'm going to put the Amazon, Kindle, audio. I listened to a little bit of the audio. It was amazing. Okay, Meg, this you are, you gave everyone such a gift with this book. And I hope that I have convinced you to go read it. So everyone, please hit like if you like my book reviews. And until my next book.